Hey everybody, it is that time. It is, as one of my staff said years and years ago, it's Friday. Here we go, everybody. I am fired up. I think my voice is slowly getting better. You will all be the determiners of that. But my guess is that I'll be able to speak uh, and speak extemporaneously and keep it going without hacking up a lung or whatever the heck was going on with me. But it is Friday. That means we've gotten through one week. That is day one, day two, day three, day four, now day five. Day five, we're going to be practicing the beginning of the presentation. And I'm also going to walk through how to do your part A in its entirety so you can follow along with me. And then you're going to go on breakout rooms and do it yourself. Now, as always, be prepared because I will be asking you if you work with your upline. So what I need you to tell me is who your upline is what you did well one if you work with them and two what did you do whether it was script practice making phone calls uh, listening to presentation whatever the case is please let me know what that is and as soon as i put the drb link in there please fill out the drb link notice everything in that drb link i need a number okay i don't want you to put na <laughs> because that <clears throat> because what happens is i tabulate all the results and then na kicks everything out so if you didn't make any phone calls, it's zero. If you didn't see any ALP being generated yesterday, then the number is zero, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. But as always, this is the most exciting day for me in the first week because this is the day usually the class members all come together and really set me up for a really great weekend because I have a lot of work to do this weekend because I gotta watch all your videos. So to ensure please, that you set me up for Friday, you set me up for Saturday, you set me up for the flight I have to take on Sunday to get to Detroit. New agent class 23-012, otherwise known as 23-12. How are we doing this morning? Good. 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 Jenna Naughton, Michael Walker, Ali, Tua, Raheem, Royce, Erica Bartholomew, Ellis Davis the fourth. You didn't even have your microphones on. You didn't even have, I mean, come on, everybody. Let's go. This isn't hard. I'm gonna give you a pass because that was a good one. I'm hoping by the time we get to the next Friday, everybody's engaged and ready to go. Ellis Davis, come on, man. Your mic wasn't even on. What's oh, up? I thought my camera and mic was on. I was in here yelling. My kid was looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> I love it. And so <laughs> one of the reasons that I do this is continuous reinforcement of making sure we know how to unmute, mute ourselves, and be engaged. Because on Monday, we're going to go through the emotional granularity wheel, and we're going to see what happens when you don't bring energy, when you don't bring positivity, you don't do things like that, what the impact potentially could be. So... Hey, we did it already. I don't think we need to do it again. So we're going to start asking people, starting with Shaker, because he's the first person in the upper left-hand corner of my screen. Shaker, even though you're in the dark, my friend, I can barely see you, but the background looks lovely. How was your evening yesterday, my friend? Oh, it was absolutely fabulous. Do you want any details? <laughs> I don't understand. I, it, this is my fault. I have failed as a facilitator. Thank God I'm not an instructor. So let me try to facilitate one more time. Hey, if I call on you and ask you how your day went yesterday, please tell me your upline. Please tell me if you work with your upline and then tell me what happened if in fact you work with your upline. All right, so listen. You, you, you did perfect, the failure was mine. We're gonna rewind all the way to the beginning and say, hey, Shaker, you're the first person in my camera on my, on my screen, the upper left-hand corner, I'm gonna call on you first. Shaker, did you get a chance to work with your upline yesterday? Yes, I did. I worked with my upline. I made a lot of calls. I called and I called and finally I realized that I'm calling the same people. Sydney's calling, so I said, okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> did you get anybody on the phone? I did. I got a hold of one person, it was on the spot, not a sale, but three referrals, and uh, he's going to call them today, so hopefully he gets a sale. Nice. I love it. So let me ask you this. As you understand the rules, if you get someone on the spot, you give it to a producer, they call, they don't get the sale, but they call back, and that person then ends up buying, do you still get some love out of that sale? 
I, w- I wanted to say yes, but... Uh, oh, but you don't know, do you? All right, my friend, here's what you do. You make sure you clarify that because anything that's not clarified, my experience has been, it's not always in your best interest, right? Okay. So always make sure you understand the rules of the game. It's bad enough when they don't tell you the rules, but if you know the rules, then you should be able to win. All right, so that's great. Thank you, Shaker. I appreciate that. Lena Hart, good morning, good afternoon. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am well. Thank you very much. Tell me about your day yesterday. All right. Uh, my upline is Jesse Doherty. I work with the trainer, Gavin. Uh, we did role play with each other, uh, you know, going over a uh, the, the A script from top to bottom. Um, I work with my colleague, Tiffany, and just get us comfortable with, you know, going through. That was a lot of stuff. And it also got us kind of mad about how low veterans benefits are from the government as far as the report the bureau. Wait, wait, hold, hold on. So I'm a little, I'm a little confused. This is me. It's not you. So you're in AO North working under Jesse Doherty's hierarchy, correct? That's correct. <clears throat> so when you say you worked on uh, part, you worked on this, you worked on script A, what are you referring to? The the veteran presentation script, the A. Well, okay, you know, so, so you know, all right, are you in the U.S.? Yes. Okay, thank you. That that was the part that was confusing me because I know <laughs> yes. the girls up the AL, they don't have the same veteran approach, but right. you do. So, and they don't typically sell it, but they're really right. good. They've been in the sale of the game for a long period of time. So here's one thing I want you to take into account. If you have any issues or questions specific to a U.S. market, let me know, okay? Because just like I don't know everything about the Canadian market, and those guys do, vice versa. Even though their leadership is in Canada, they don't always know everything about the Canadian market, sorry, the U.S. market, because we've just introduced them having their hierarchy extend down into the continental United States, okay? But you work for a great group. I'm glad that they're there for you. That is awesome. Thank you very much. Let's go to, you know, who have I not called on in like forever? Let's look. Let me find somebody. And you know whose name pops up? And I may have called you. My apologies. But Veronica Guarneros. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I haven't had a chance to work with my upline. Uh, my license just became active barely um, yesterday. Um, so I don't know if that's the reason. Um, we did set an appointment to meet uh, yesterday from 5 to 9. Um, and I don't believe he was able to make it, but, um, I'm not sure if I had the right date. Maybe it was a different day. Who is your uh, upload? Um, Steve Sparks. And who is above him? I, I don't remember who Steve, I don't know Steve. Who's he work for? Steven, you know? um, I know I'm supposed to be training with, oh. uh, with Sonia at 930. Sonia at 930. I, I you mean in 15 minutes? Yes. Um, that's okay. why you so is your upline to Law and Bain or, or those? Who is your RGA? Do you know? Uh, Brandon Summerton. Brandon Summerton. Okay. So Brandon, he, he, so your hierarchy wants you to pull out of this class in 15 minutes and go work with her. Yes, because we, uh, we're we focusing on a different script. Um, yeah, totally fine. I have no problem with that. Let's make sure I understand. Okay, got it. So you're going to at least be working with somebody today. Thank goodness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And, uh, awesome. Okay. Great. I love it. Tom Lafferty. I know you're not looking at me. I know you're looking down. You're probably looking at the script, right? Because I'm going to call you to do your a your part A. No, your your A one. You ready? You ready for your A one, Tom? I love it. Students are very smart. They'll unplug their audio so it look like they can talk and they'll start talking they go oh i've got i got technical issues and then they don't have to do it i love it no i'm just kidding tom i'm sure that's not the case with you uh carla Moraz. i'm sure i'm butchering that is it Moraz? Moraz. yes Moraz. all right carla how are you i'm good how are you okay i am well thank you so much i feel better my voice sounds a little bit better so we'll see how it plays out so you know what i'm going to ask right i'm, I'm sorry? going i said do you know what i'm going to ask you Yes. Okay, so here I we go. My no, I'm going to ask you, what did the class teach me yesterday? What's in the class? Como estas? I'm sorry, what? You cut off, I'm sorry. Oh, I cut. See, another technique, students. So you guys are getting good. You're catching on really fast. All right, Carl. <laughs> I said, what did the class teach me yesterday? Why did we teach you? Oh, my goodness. You are I the best know. at this. This is awesome. 
No, let me try one more time. I said, what did the class teach me yesterday? I don't know. I'm not sure what we teach you. Okay, no worries. Not a problem. Austin Mowbray, this time you got the hat working, man. I can't see the nice do, uh, you know, the haircut, whatnot. Here we go. Did you work with your upline yesterday? Yeah, um, I'm with the Dushai group. We just did the same thing we've kind of been doing all week with the PA vet phone scripts and the rebuttals, just role playing, trying to book the trainer. And mm -hmm. then we did some sort of like popcorn <clears throat> rapid fire rebuttals. We were working with Willie Greenwood. Um, nice. I love really, it. Okay. Really well spoken guy. So he was he was cool to work with. Yeah, they're all cool. I love all those guys. I, actually, virtually every hierarchy. I'll just say every hierarchy. I've never had any issues with a hierarchy. I know sometimes they get busy and whatnot. I totally get that. All of you are fortunate, in my opinion, to work in the hierarchies that we're in, the ones that I support, the fact that you're here. <clears throat> All of you are very fortunate. So I still have a little bit of a cough, but at least I'm not dragging it on. So this is Friday. So TGIF, right? TGIF, the grind includes Fridays, the grind. And today we are going to actually grind. But I'm not done yet asking people questions because, you know, that's how I roll. So let's go to, let's see, second page, Tiffany King. It has been a moment, Tiffany, since I chatted with you. How are you doing today? Wonderful. How are you? I am well. Thank you very much. Did you work with your upline yesterday? Um, yes, that's Jesse Doherty and Gavin. Uh -huh. Like Lena explained, we went over the script yesterday. Mm -hmm. She and I um, role played a few times, and I think we got the gist of things a little bit. Um, yeah, had a little fine tuning, but I think so. I'm not sure I understand it. what that means. You got the gist of things. Does that mean you, the gist? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm the sorry. Gist? Yes, the okay. gist of things. Forgive so me. No, 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 no. I'm just, it's my hearing. It's not you. So I just want to make sure I understand. They did the, uh, or they work with you on the veteran script. Mm -hmm. Yes. The US, okay. Yes. And are you yes. confident now of being able to navigate your way through at least part A? Sort of, kind of. Oh, my goodness. Sort of, kind of. Okay. That's At the fair. end of the day. Well, I, okay. I'll, I'll take that as a sort of, kind of. That's fine. Uh, Jenny, Jenna Naughton, are you there? Jenna Naughton, are you there? I am, but I'm actually driving. I'm on my way to a doctor's appointment. Oh, are you the one driving for an hour and a half? Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry, Jenna. Okay. No worries. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember every email I get. It's just because not, I get like a thousand emails every single day. So I have to filter and do a bunch of stuff. And then I mean, who, you guys don't care about that. Who wants to hear about my problems? Heather Johnson, let's hear about your problems. How are you doing and did you work with your upline yesterday i am great sam uh thanks for asking i did work with my upline yesterday um nick again but my up my upline is michael connor but i worked with nick um we went over the script and rebuttals um again script and rebuttals. so it, would it be better if i said did you work with your hierarchy because it doesn't your upline to me is the same thing as your hierarchy it just don't oh. As long as you work with somebody within your hierarchy, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I said Nick the other day. You said I don't know who that is, so I figured. Well, out. But, but now you said Michael Connor, so now I know Nick's part of Michael Connor's group. I don't know how they relate, but he's in there as well. Okay, yeah, he's awesome. Excellent. So I have 16 submittals so far on the DRB report. We are moving at a snail's pace on a Friday, which is okay as long as we finish the race in time. Right, we don't. You have to literally be just put it on there two minutes ago. Getting fourteen in two minutes is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and then I should be ecstatic that I have sixteen now. That's awesome. <laughs> so when I ask, what did I learn from the class today? I learned that I could be slapped down by one of my own students. That's awesome. Amara Michaelis, I'm sure I'm saying that name incorrectly, Amara. How do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Michaelis. Michaelis. Well, I think I was pretty close. Michaelis. You okay. Said it right yesterday, but okay. <laughs> okay. Yesterday I was out of my mind, so we can't account for how well I did anything yesterday. All right, Amara, did you work with your upline yesterday? Um, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. 
Do you want to know what we worked on? Oh my goodness. Again, I have failed as a facilitator. Yeah, Amar, when I call you and I say, hey, you're working the airplane, what I'm hoping that you're going to tell me without me having to pull teeth is who your upline is and what did you do? Yeah, so uh, Willie, Willie Greenwood is my upline, uh -huh. um, but I worked a little bit more with my essay yesterday, Gino Brissom. Gino Brissom, yes. Um, watched him do a presentation. Um, it was a little bit different than what um, I've been seeing and things like that. I haven't got a chance to see his instead until yesterday, um, but I like the style. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot about a different approach towards the presentation. Yesterday, so. so help me understand what was different. What First of all, what market was the presentation for? Veterans. Okay, um, and what, what was different? Yeah, the one thing that I really took away because I've been having trouble with like the closing portion um, mm -hmm. is when you show like the the recommended and then enhanced mm -hmm. uh, rates or programs to the clients mm -hmm. or members that um, he said now. The enhance is five hundred dollars. Now I would never recommend that to you. What I would recommend is what they're actually recommending to you. And then he went that way. Um, right. So it's a different approach to a sale. And what he's doing from a sales philosophy is he's driving the client into where he wants them to buy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that if you want to do that. I just want you to consider one thing. When you do that, if you do it consistently, and I don't know if Chris does, he may do it because of that situation. However, if you were to do that consistent, consistently, what ends up happening is any margin, well, it's not margin in this case, but any ALP lift that you could have gotten, you will never recognize because you're pushing them always down. Remember, the whole script is set up to you, set up for you to not only provide recommendations, but at the very end, you're going to help them out decide kind of what makes sense for them and then construct a price point that meets their, what their budget is theoretically. So if you never, if you always say, Hey, I'd never have you do this top one. I'd always have you go down. You'll never get people to buy the top one or very few and far between, but that's okay. If you're closing at a really high rate, who cares how much you're selling it for, as long as you're getting the ALP that you want for the month that you're in. So I, I and I'm going to, I'll, I'll chat with him. I want to ask him why he does that. I don't care that he does that. I don't care if you do it, just so you know, just to understand what happens. If you do it consistently, there's a potential impact to you, okay? Okay. But if you're having problems with the clothes and then that works better for you, plagiarize it, steal it, right? Who cares if you do that 50 times in a row? Because on the 51st time, you could decide to change it up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm not going to be the one that's going to judge you. All I care about is that you're comfortable with whatever you're doing. And if you can plagiarize something from Chris or Mark Deschai, anybody, and it works for you, I'm all about it. Okay? Okay. Excellent. So, Tony Smith, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Hey, quick question. I was just trying to see if anybody else was having problems with the um, the report. Um, when I click on it, it's not letting me go to the next page. of, um, and I opened it in a different browser, copied and pasted the link and all that, and it's still not letting me submit it. Let me see. Uh, is anybody else having that problem? No? Ouch. It could, for some reason, Tony, it could be you. Every once in a while, it does give me a little bit of <coughs> heartache, but not because of that. It gives me heartache because I'm trying to modify various forms and whatnot. So don't worry about it. You know, try to submit it. I'll add you to my list since you told me that you have an issue, okay? Thank you. Okay, gotcha. Tomonique says, I can't click on it. I have to use the email, Sam. Oh yeah, well, Tomonique, your situation is different. All right, gotcha. All right, so we talked a little bit about what we did yesterday uh, in terms of after the class. Yesterday, what did we do during class? Do we remember what we did yesterday? Adrian. Do you remember what we did yesterday in class? Um, we practiced building plans and we practiced the A1 opening as well. Okay. And we practiced building the plans without having to go through other and doing all of that. We went yeah, into the pre-plan pre generator. Yeah. Right. So today, 
we're not going to do anything with plans because we've done a bunch of plans. We've got that muscle memory kind of going. Today is actually practicing our part A because we've got to do that homework, right? We've got to have a video of ourselves recorded. Uh, we have to provide me all of the attachments that we're going to use. However, it's not that simple, right? I'm going to put one more thing into the mix because I want everyone to understand what is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen so you can see this. All right, let me do that right now. Nope, that's participants. Okay, here we go. Share screen. Share. There we go. And can we see it? Yep, there it is. All right, so this is the presentation rubric. All right, this is the new and updated presentation rubric. The other one was a is an attachment that is in your day one email attachment. And it says presentation rubric, and it basically is a PDF file, and the field would fill it out in order for to evaluate how well you guys can do what you're doing. And it was based on a 200 point system. Now we have this site here, and it's the presentation rubric. The maximum score you're trying to get is 250 points. That aligns with this idea of 250 point uh, activity scale that when you release your working, most of the hierarchies have adopted and used. Basically says that if you make every phone call or every outbound dial you make is worth one point. Every sit that you have with a client is worth 50 points. Okay, so the idea is if you get 250 points every day, you're going to be successful in this job. And you could do that a number of ways. You can make 250 dials in a day, or you can have, what, four presentations in a day, and you've got 200 points, and then you only need to make 50 dials. So the whole thing is geared towards activity. So I apply that 250-point concept here, and this is, uh, hold on, let me get my little thing going. This is how it looks relative to the scoring for the rubric itself. So if you look at your scripts, whichever one you want to use, the script actually is broken up into four sections. Section A talks about your opening, pre-qualified benefits, sponsorship. Section B is needs analysis, qualification. Section C is presenting after you've built the plan, either the recommendations and the options. And then section D is closing, handling any closing objections and adjusting the plan if necessary. Each section has certain point value to add up to 250. So 65, 50, 65, and 70. And now what we say here, should the student struggle or the agent struggle during the presentation or miss providing certain information altogether, evaluators will deduct points. So in my mind, you're not trying to earn points to 250. You are already at 250. So what they then do is take away points if you have some challenges in certain areas. Okay, we do encourage the evaluators to provide written feedback for each section so that the student understands the rationale for the points that were deducted as well as understand what you did well. Right. So you, they put in their name. They put in their email. They tell me what RGA it's for and they tell me which one of the script. Oh, sorry here. They tell me if it's going to be for new agent training practice, which is what we're doing today or if it's for the agents released to the field, or if it's a released agent who just needs a refresher. Then you're gonna put in the student's name, student's email, and then what market script that's being used. There's a whole bunch of scripts in here. Uh, when you are doing this together, you're gonna to pick whatever script that the student tells you that they're using, whether it's the veteran script, the no cost legal will kit, McGruff or the credit union script, okay? Then section A pops up here, you're going to provide feedback. So here's where you would actually type in the notes. Hey, your voice was too low. Hey, you never looked into the camera during A1. So you're going to type in certain notes. And as you type those in, you're then going to come down here. And these are the major sections for part A. Introduction, report, report building, survey or family and financial information guide. And you can see I tell you how much the max score is for any one of these sections. So what we are doing today in its entirety <coughs> is part A. So that means you're gonna be in a room, breakout room, with one or two other people and that's it. Each one of you needs to go through part A in its entirety and one of you is going to be the 
be the uh, client and the evaluator. So let's say it's Tony Smith, Joseph Fon, and myself are together, and I'm going to present to Tony. Tony is going to be my client, and she's going to be my evaluator. Okay. So you're going to so you're going to give me the feedback here, what you think is appropriate based on the script, based on the interaction with the client. You are also going to give me the score that I got here, and then you're going to click next. Now we're only doing it for part A. Okay, nothing else. We're done at part A, but the rubric here has the same information for each one of the sections, section B, C, and D. Each one of these tells us what our score potentially would be and the evaluator to give us feedback. When we get through all of this, we get down to the bottom. The system will automatically tell us how many points we scored in each section. It will also tell us our cumulative score and it will tell us whether we passed the rubric. In order to pass the rubric, you need 75% to pass. Now, we're not doing it together today to pass anything, right? All we're doing is the very beginning of part A. We fill all the stuff out, so you are gonna get a copy of it. You're, the person you're, do, you're evaluating will get a copy to their email, so they'll have a record of it, and then it sits in my database, so I automatically get a copy, so that way I know that you've completed it. Again, we're only doing part A. You can go ahead and go hit click next when you're done, get to part B, just click next, don't fill anything out, because I'm not looking for you to do anything else. I'm purely interested in part A. Now, that being said, you're being evaluated by your student, or what is it, classmate, <laughs> right? So the classmate can't help you. That's not the intent. The classmate has to act like they're the client. So if you're stumbling through that, that's okay. This is practice. This is practice in the sense of we should know how to get through everything, but now we actually have to do it while we're being evaluated. So that means, in my mind, there is a fear spike potential to this, like under the gun, I have to do this. No one's going to help me. I've got to navigate this. I've got to look in the camera. I've got to be able to manipulate HB Pro, uh, Zoom, and the script. I've got to do all those things as if I'm in a client setting. So once you have that filled out as the student who's evaluating, you're going to come down here, just click submit. The rest of this stuff won't come up. Uh, it may come up, just ignore it. Click submit, and you should be good to go. Do I have any questions about the online presentation rubric scoring system? Let me do this. Let me see if I have any questions. No one's raising their hand. Really? Not one. This class, come on. You know, this is the first class that's going to use the online presentation rubric scoring system. All right, Lewis, I knew you weren't going to let me down. What can I do for you? I cannot hear you, sir. Is that me? Did I kill the sound? Can somebody say anything else? That's not you. That's oh, it's just uh, there you go, Lewis. What can I do for you? Um, yeah, sorry, it's my, uh, anyway. Uh, I stepped out momentarily. I do not know, uh, where do we get that form? Where do we ask I stuff? To you yet. I'm gonna put it in the chat in just a second. Okay? Thank you. All I was doing is going through it so that people start to become familiar with it, okay? Ali, did you have a question? No, okay. So it was so, the same question. Okay, perfect. So now in all fairness, I could throw you to the wolves and have you do that, but it has been my experience that a lot of people, and I'll ask you, but a lot of students in the past has have, uh, oh my gosh, what is going on here? All right, a lot of students in the past have appreciated if I do a walkthrough of part A, even though they've watched a lot of presentations, they've seen the videos that I've given them, sometimes they ask for me to walk through it. So by a show of hands, there are how many of us in here? 60 of you in here. If 30 people, if 31 people puts your hands up, I will do the walkthrough, okay? And it's okay if you don't put your hand up, you don't need the walkthrough, I'm totally fine with that. It is fine. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me do this, aren't you? All right, all right, 34 of you said yes. Okay, so I'm gonna do the walkthrough. However, keep in mind, I am gonna walk through it. I'm gonna zoom through it. I'm not gonna spend the time unless somebody has a question when I get to a certain spot. Because most of us are familiar with this, I appreciate that you wanna see me do it, but I don't think everyone needs me to do every last tiny detail. Ali, now your hand is up. Is that from before or do you have a question? 
Nope, no questions. Do I have, uh, actually, Anna, your hand had been up before. Do you have a question? <clears throat> there it is. Yeah, um, I finally was able to uh, have, talk to uh, Steve Sparks yesterday, but unfortunately, I got the stomach flu yesterday. So uh, I, I I didn't, on my, it, yesterday would have been my first day with, with my, uh, up with, uh, training yesterday. Okay. Unfortunately, I I got sick. Okay. So, well, one, I'm 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 sorry that you got sick. Uh, but I'm not clear. Do you want me? What, just, what do you? I would want like to? I would like you to do this, and and yeah, uh, I know you're gonna you know zoom through it and everything. Um, but um, I, just to let you know what's going on, I guess. Okay. okay. Yeah, no worries. If you have a question, you can just ask me. But remember, you'll be in a room with your peers. So before you have to do the thing, you may ask questions from them as well. Right. We're not, we're not here to like test you out or, you know, flunk you out of the course. That's not the case. But I do need you to feel the fear spike of having to do this for a number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mallory, 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 what can I do for you? I have a quick question. Um, so I'm part of the douche group. And I guess as of yesterday, there was a new script. Do we go based off that one or the one you sent us? I don't. It doesn't matter to me. You can use whatever script that you want. Their script is not going to be that a little, much. Yeah. OK. Just wanted to ask. Yeah. Ultimately, your hierarchy is the ultimate determiner of whatever the rules are. Okay. My job is to teach you the basics, make sure you understand how to use everything. So uh, <clears throat> my job is to teach you the science of sales, not necessarily the art. What they're doing is teaching you the art. Does that make okay. sense? Makes sense. All right. Thank you. Okay. Austin, what can I do for you? Yeah. So the way I kind of work with my computers, I divide my screens up like into different sections so I can look at multiple things at once. So when mm -hmm. I'm doing the homework, is it fine if I have half, since I'm going to be recording my screen through Zoom, can I have half my screen with the script and then half my screen with the HP Pro, or do you not want the script like well, up on the screen? I think of it this way. What you're going to send me is your actual recording of engaging with the client in part A. Do you want the client to see the script up there? No. So you, you know, okay. print it out. Well, however you want to do it, whether you print it out, whether you get a second screen, which, by the way, everybody, you should invest 50 bucks and get a cheap second screen. It will make your life a heck of a lot easier. And to, uh, to last point, when you share with Zoom, you don't have to share just your desktop. You can share an actual application or a window. So even though yeah. you may be seeing multiple things, the client's only going to see that which you shared. Okay. Yeah, so Austin, what I've done is I've kept the PDF open on one half, and I'm just going to share the Zoom, um, HP Pro, uh, HP Pro through Zoom. So you can have both open, and the client won't see your Adobe file, okay? Thanks, Shaker. All right, here we go. So let me share my screen. I'm going to run through this, and hopefully I'll get it right. If I do something wrong, you all should tell me, right? So I am here, I'm gonna go in and log in, right? That's the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna log in. And once I log in, this screen comes up, I go to launch HP Pro. Here I'm gonna type the word other, so O-T-H-E-R. I'm gonna click on other. I'm gonna click on the great state of, well, I was gonna say California, but let's go with Alaska. All right, presentation type in this case is gonna be credit union. Oh no, is it really gonna be the credit union? Am I gonna mix things up here? Hold on a second. Let me see. Am I actually going to do that? Let's go to here. Let's go to applications. No, hold on one second, everybody. I've got to get to the right stuff here. What do I want to do? Let's go here. And if you want to turn on your uh, credit union script or look at it as I go through this, since I've been doing veterans almost exclusively, feel free. All right, so now I'm in the presentation script. I'm gonna do return card. I'm sorry, I'm in the credit union market. I'm gonna do the return card. The SG number according to the script is SG3EU. When I do that, I wait for a second, it shows up there. I now click on it and it automatically populate the Spokane City Credit Union. Now I'm ready to start the presentation. 
So basically, I would say, hey, Shaker, I'm glad I can see you today. Although the light's not very good. Are you there? Is your wife there? How are things going? You know, do whatever it is that I'm going to do to connect and start to build rapport. Once that's done, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to share my screen with you. Let me know when you can see it. And when that happens, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my video and I'm going to share my screen. So then my screen pops up. It looks like that. Notice that this is much bigger than the veteran organization because we do go through all of this stuff here, right? Anything that's not in there, we don't necessarily have to do. So if I'm looking at the script, I talk about, hey, the Spokane Credit Union found that members have a very serious gap in the personal insurance benefits. A lot of them needed help with estate planning. And then I go through that. Then I'm on the page two and I talk about the member survey. So I click on this. I'm going to fill out all this information. Now, if I don't fill out all the information, what ends up happening is I have to do it in the needs analysis. But if I fill it out here as part of the survey, the information will be transferred to the needs analysis. So even though I jumped into the credit union, let me ask somebody. Uh, let me stop this real quickly, because it occurs to me that we've been doing a lot of veteran and most of you in the U.S. are in veterans. So should I do the veteran as opposed to the credit union? Let me ask yes. one yes yes please mm -hmm. yes. yes please all right all right got it <laughs> you can't see me but i'm here getting hit i'm like okay i got it got it. i'm with you all right all right so i'm going to share my screen again so now we're going to go here and i am going to come down here and click on home which is going to say do you want to proceed without saving i'm going to say yes and now i'm going to go right back here at the beginning so i'm going to say other wait for it to come up i do other Wait for it to go here. Alaska shows up. I'm going to use veteran now instead of credit union. I'm going to use the return card. You could use any one of these. But in this case, I'm going to use return card. And we know that the one that I like to use is SGMAD. I'm going to go to group name. And now I'm ready to start. Excuse me. I'm ready to start the presentation with whomever it happens to be. I'll just use Shaker's name as we continue to move forward. Hey, Shaker, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm glad to see the families there. All the rest of that stuff. Looks like the weather's good in your neck of the woods. I just had a tornado here, lost my house, but hey, I'm still talking to you. Once I get all that done, including my personal value statement about the fact that I really hate insurance, but I'm here talking to you because it pays me. After that is complete, then I'm going to say I'm going to share my screen. Let me know once you can see it. I'm going to stop my video, and then I'm going to share my screen right here at this point. Okay. Yes, Lena, your hand is up. You didn't like my jokes? I understand. What can I do for you? Uh, no, it just showed the VFW of California instead of Alaska, and I was just wondering whether that's appropriate or is that, that just doesn't change. For the purposes of what I'm doing, you can always use SDMAD in class. When you actually have a lead, right, when you actually have a lead, the appropriate <coughs> letter will come up because we, the system knows which one should be displayed. Okay. <coughs> All right. So I'm going to say, hey, this is the copy of the letter. I'm going to show this letter. I am not going to move to page two, three, or four because this one talks about uh, the beginning here. Hey, the Veteran Service Organization got together, no source of common concerns, one, two, and three. And at the end, there's a report form that goes back. If I had moved accidentally to this one, to another page, they might start asking you questions about, well, what is that saying? What does that mean? Anytime you get ahead of yourself, you have to spend time explaining and a lot of times trying to overcome an objection. So don't do that. Only show page one at this point in your presentation. Once that's done, we're getting down to the next thing, which is the actual survey. So in this case, I'm going to say, hey, they're married. This person was working in the Army. Current veteran status was an honorable discharge. They do not have a VSO membership, and that means it's NA there. They're not eligible for any of that good stuff, but they did serve with honorable service. So in war service, it's going to be NA. Here they were a airman, even though they were in the army, and they have no coverage for VA. Of course, I'm asking all these questions, but in this case, I'm just making the assumptions. Here I'm going to say the name is Morgan Hunter. Date of birth is 01-01-1990. And female, she is actually going to be the veteran in this case. And she's married to Taylor, and Taylor was born in 0101. 1992 and they have no children so i don't need to put anything there morgan is employed full-time and she works in sales and her annual income is seventy-five thousand dollars. taylor works full-time he is a teacher 
and his annual salary is $68,000, okay? Then we ask him about insurance. Now, I don't need to do any of that. I can just click on this and it will automatically bring this up and I can then walk them through it. Hey, do you have any insurance? Through work. I'm asking him that if you follow along with the script, that's kind of what we're doing. In this case, I'm just gonna put a bunch of zeros, but whatever number they give you, please enter in that number and then you ask about insurance outside work. One thing I should tell you is never ever denigrate another insurance company. There's no point. Right, no point to ever denigrate another insurance company. I don't care who it is. I don't know. I don't care what you know about them, because what you're in fact doing, if you denigrate an insurance company at any point during your discussion with a client, you're actually denigrating insurance. That's how a client will ultimately see it. So there's no need to do that. Shaker, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Yes. Where in script A? What part of script A are you at? I'm trying to track you with this script. I mean, I am at A3. So I'm right here, I'm beginning to fill out all of the survey information, VA life insurance, other insurance, that's where I'm at right there. All right, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So now I've gone through this, I'm gonna go over here. Do you have any checking accounts? If the answer is yes, I wanna put how many that they have. Again, this is just for you. We're not using it to make a determination about anything. It's just use, useful information for us to understand our clients. Talicia, what can I do for you? I just had a question um, on the script in A3 on other insurances where it says if they have other policies, be prepared to spend the insurance. What does that mean? Be prepared to spend the insurance. Yeah. Do I have that in this one? Where, where are you looking at? at it right oh, now, just a little oh. bit right there. Yeah. Okay. Right here. If they have a, okay. So here's what happens. If somebody just, again, this is more of an art thing. Okay. But if somebody I'm talking to, let's say it's Shaker. Shaker, I'm just going to use you all day. Shaker, if you have insurance in any other company, one, I'm going to say, hey, that's really good. I'm glad that you did that. And what I'm thinking is going to be completely different than what you guys are thinking. Because if you, as someone who doesn't know the sales game or used to selling insurance, you hear somebody already has it, you're going to be like, oh my God, they don't need any. In my mind, what I think is, oh, they understand the value of insurance. That's all it means to me. Okay, you understand the value. Now, what I'm going to do is keep track in my mind of, okay, you, do you have a house payment? Do you have a mortgage payment? Do you have kids? Do you have in-laws that you need to take care of? What age are you at? Do you have any tangible assets that you still have outstanding loans on? Do you have any credit card debt? So there's eight areas now that I'm thinking about as I go through this, Talisha. And if you tell me you have insurance, I'm going to spend that insurance to cover one of those things. That's all it is. That's all I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, where I told you, well, you'll see this at the bottom uh, when we get done. It gives a recommendation. I'm going to walk through that. And I'm going to tell you why you don't do it at that point. The whole idea here is to understand the total economic exposure that mm -hmm. a client has. And if they have insurance, you start spending the insurance to reduce the economic exposure. Because by the time you're done, they still have exposure. And that's part of our job is to let them know about that. Does that answer your question? Yes, very clearly. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, no, you mean very wordy. I got you. It's okay, Erica. It's fine. No, no. I, I'm sorry. Talisha, I'm looking at Erica. Her hand is up and I'm saying her name. You know what? I'm losing my mind. It is Friday. Erica, what can I do for you? Um, so with the, the script for the presentation, um, it's different from my upline. So which one would I use for the homework? Would I use for my upline or the one that you sent? You use the one for your upline. The one for that I've given you is the basic, it's the standard. If they tweak it, I'm totally down with that. That's the one they want you to use as you get released and you're selling. So start using it now. Fair enough? Okay. Yeah, so even when we go in like the breakout room, still use the one that I got yep. from Alpine? Yep, use the one because the, the presentation rubric when you're being evaluated, it's not asking the student who's evaluating you to go, did you say, have you been able to roll in your veteran? No, what it says is, did you fill out either the survey or the family information guide? How you do it and what you say, that's up to you. The fact that you did it, that's what we're evaluating. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Right. Perfect, so let me go back here. We've done that, we're here. Hey, do you have any savings accounts? Uh, so the answer here was yes on the checking. I have two of those. Do you have a savings account? Yes, but I only have one of those. No investment accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any property? Do you rent or do you own? Well, I actually do own. My monthly payment is, I don't know, $2,000. Mortgage balance is uh, 350,000. My rate is 2.6 and years left, I don't know, it's gonna be 29, 28, whatever, hit save. There you go. If there's additional properties, you can put that in as well. And again, we're we're capturing this information because we're trying to see what their financial exposure is. 
Then do you want to do bank locally for checking and savings? Yes, I do. How do you want to be uh, buried, cremated, or put in a mausoleum? Hey, I just want to be burial, and I plan on doing it in private. Okay, that's great. So theoretically now, I've done this entire survey. Everything should be filled out. The way I know that is if I click complete and that comes up or save and exit comes up, then I know I've completed everything. I'm good to go. Now, remember, <clears throat> I asked you never to click on view recommendations, because if you do, what the system does is it comes up and it will always say this. Always. It will always have survey considerations. Ten times annual income and life insurance minus one point four million dollars. If you show that to the client you're actually putting the life insurance discussion way in advance. The script doesn't talk anything about life insurance until we get to the recommendations from the VSOs in the veteran market, right? So why in the world would you, you wouldn't do this? Because if you did it to me, okay, and I'm just a regular client, and I saw that, I would go, okay, you're trying to sell me life insurance? Now you got to start overcoming an objection, right? That's number one. But number two, I'm going to ask you, well, I don't understand. I have a couple. I have a hundred thousand dollars. I don't need. What does that say? One point four million. Right now, you've got a different problem of the the survey is based on the information given is telling the client that he should be at one point four million dollars. Actually, what it's saying is it should be ten times your annual income. So whatever you put in insurance would be subtracted from the annual income that uh, where is it right here. Right, a hundred and uh, what is that? Thirty, hundred forty-three thousand dollars. So that's why it says ten times is one point four three. So please, I'm I'm asking, never click on view recommendations. I think it just causes more issues for you at the very beginning of your presentation. Gus, what can I do for you? Um, did you intend for your mortgage balance to be just three hundred fifty dollars? Uh, no, I want it to be three hundred fifty thousand. Good catch. Oh, 2000 and now 350,000. Thank you. Click save. Okay. So now we're here. I've got that done. All this is filled out. And the reason we fill this out is because it will flow through everything else. Now I'm going to click on save and exit. So now that is complete. So according to the script on page, what page, I don't know what page it's on page three. We're going to move into the AD&D certificate, right? So the next thing that after the LWTPS, which is the survey, is the group AD&D certificate. Now, understand that when you are doing this with an actual live client, the appropriate certificate will come up for you, okay? Now, there may be some scripts of uplines that don't want you to show this. If that's the case, don't worry about it. Just do what that script tells you to do. So once that's up, now what is the next thing you're going to do? You're going to go and close this. Right. You could download this if you wanted and send it to the client if you wanted to do that. And the way you do it is you click on the download button right here. Three little balls will spin and then you save it. OK. Next thing you're going to go into is the family information guide. So you're going to click on this. We're now at a five of the script and I'm going to share that. So then you go to the right. You talk about this. Anything you read. Hey, is going to apply to your very veteran uh, benefits and life insurance, then you're gonna click the right arrow and now we're coming here. Notice that all this information is already in here simply because you filled out the survey. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click on that pencil and you're gonna fill in any of the gray areas. We don't want the gray areas to be blank, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna say this person was born in San Francisco and as I fill this out, Lewis, what is your question, my friend? The, on the previous screen on the, um, the group, certificate uh, uh maybe i and i apologize if i missed that where did that come from uh is that uh, it, was that something that was in that we got from the client or is that something that we just generated no it's something that is put into hb pro because we know the type of lead that you have so when you have the hb pro lead displayed you will have the appropriate group letter and the appropriate ad and d certificate okay so that was already in that crm yep. okay it's already okay. in there Thank yeah you. absolutely mm -hmm. uh austin what can i do for you is that ad i know you mentioned yesterday that there's typically four documents that we would send to the client is that ad and d certificate the first one yes okay okay now you're going to go down to spouse and vital statistics, but before you click on that, remember for each one of these sections, 
you want to click that floppy disk so the information is saved. I cannot tell you the number of times that students have problems where they do not do this and then HP Pro hiccups and they lose all the data. What you will find is if they lose the data, you're not going to want to go back and ask the client all the information all over again. You just won't. Trust me, you won't do it. So go ahead and click on the floppy disk, come down here and click on this one. And notice we just have the place of birth right here. So we're gonna say this person was also born in San Francisco as well. Once that's done, go ahead and click the floppy disk, move over to the right. We're gonna confirm that this information we put in is accurate because if it's inaccurate, you can make the change right here real time. Now, once that's done, you're gonna click on that and then you're gonna go into the script that talks about veterans to be notified, right? Now we're on page eight. So page eight, we have all of this together. We've done the veteran information and now it says, so the veteran service groups of family can be difficult for, zil for, zil for, zil for, zil for civilians to work with the VA. That is why they recommend listing veterans that the family can count on. And you can list more than what's listed here simply by once you click on the pencil, you can hit the plus button and continue to add people. Simon, what can I do for you? Hey, Sam, just a quick question. So. I know we're doing the A1 opening in breakout rooms. No, you're not, doing A, you're not doing the A1 opening in breakout rooms. You're doing all of part A. Oh, okay. I misunderstood. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's so what what I so we also do this as well. Oh, yeah. You're going to go through all of this. Absolutely. And by the way, when you do this in the breakout rooms, I want to see every section that you could possibly fill with information. OK, so you've got to go through the process as if the client is actually giving you all four people in the veterans to be notified. Right. And then when we go to the next page, which is page six, you're going to fill out the family notification list. You're going to fill out all four. You're going to fill out all five. I understand it takes time. I get it. But I need you to go through that experience of having to do that, because one of the other things that you're going to count uh, if you're the evaluators, you can see how long it takes the person to get through all of part A. Okay. Uh, Edward Jones, yeah, you're fine. Go ahead and go to your doctor's appointment, I get it. So here I would fill in information, I'm not gonna do that, but if I did, once I'm done, I'm gonna go click the uh, floppy disk again. I'm gonna move through here, and now I'm on digital accounts. So when I get into the digital accounts, I am on page what of the script? Page eight, is that where I am? Yeah, I'm on page eight, right? Talk about the last one in the Testament, talk about financial and digital accounts, funeral instructions. And when I come here, I can click there just to confirm it's gonna be a burial and then it's gonna be private. And if they happen to know where they're gonna be buried, I go on and type that in for them. Ask them, hey, where are you gonna be buried? Okay, once you have all that done, you're gonna click on that. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the freedom of choice certificate to finish off the discussion saying the VSO set up the freedom of choice, you can leave a legacy behind for your family instead of a liability, and then you read that text. Once that is done, you can click off anywhere and you're right here, you're going to download this document because this is also gonna be sent to the client. And when you're finished on page five, we go through page six. So let's assume I've downloaded, it's there. I'm not gonna to go to the last will and testament. I'm gonna to go to page two and notice that it's been pre-populated, but I still want you to hit this pencil and add in any additional information that they're going to give you <coughs> for all the areas in gray. And then each section is done. Go ahead and do that. Then do it here as well. And then do that. And if they have anything about the children that they haven't given you yet, let's say they did have in the survey, they said, I had a couple of kids, whether they're adult children, younger children, doesn't matter. Once you get here, get the information and put it in here. Okay. You're doing them a favor by pre-populating it, but it also, uh, it appears as if you're doing your job not as any type of sales role. You're just doing customer service. You're doing the stuff to enroll them in their free will kit. Okay. Once that's done and filled out, and on this one, I don't. You don't need to fill all this out. You know, but the other one you did, if that makes sense. For the practice today, you don't need to fill any of this information out. All I want is everything else in the family information guide completely filled out. Once that's done, you go to the next page, and the next page you just walk through the text as it talks about it here. Then you get down to page nine of this document and you're walking through the bottom of the script of A6. 
Then you're going to go ahead and download that, get the spinning things, because this is one of the documents you're going to send a client. Once that is done, you're going to go to where? The three important facts. You're going to walk through the script here. And now we're looking at what? Page seven of the script, number one, number two, number three. And then you're going to turn the page because here, this is asking for information about veterans to be notified. And it really should be veterans to be sponsored, right? So we talked about veterans before, but what we did with those is that was in the context of those veterans helping out the family interact with the VA. Now we're talking about, hey, these are veterans that you should or you want to sponsor, Mr. Client or Mrs. Client, in order for them to get the same benefits that you and I just discussed. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and fill that one out. And again, this one has to be downloaded and saved as well. And then you're going to be at where the sponsorship program right here. And then everybody you have listed here, or basically what the text says, hey, everyone you mentioned will automatically receive the veteran legacy benefits. As you're saying that paragraph, you should be clicking on activate. Because every, as you say that, that number will grow by $2,000 for each person. And clients, when they see that, feel that they're giving money away, right? That's a good thing. So that way, when we get to where we state the problem that, hey, we didn't get enough information out to all the people that are there, can you give us any more? And oh, by the way, the VSOs have authorized you to extend these benefits to people even if they didn't serve. So hopefully this will give us a better shot at getting more referrals than just two or three every single time that we do this. Then once all of that is done, you walk through the idea of, hey, do you want to send them a text? You know, do that bit. And then guess what? Once you hit that plus, or I'm sorry, not plus, once you hit that floppy disk, you can then close this thing. In this case, I'm going to do that and close it. Once that is done, you are finished with part A because the very next thing to do is the transition to the read off letter. Okay, so I just went through that. Granted, I went through it fairly quickly, but I think we're all exposed to it. We know how to do it. Tony Smith, what can I do for you? Just wanted to verify the, is it three or four um, items that we are sending to the client? I know the ADD, the freedom of choice. What, what were, can you just clarify oh, those? Um, Here's what I said, the group ADD certificate, mm -hmm. the family information guide, the last will and testament, and the four important facts. Those are the four things that I always will send a client, whether they buy or not. Now, if they buy, there's an additional thing that I'm gonna send them that I'll show you next week when we go through EAP. So if I'm doing a sale in the veteran market, I'm sending that client five things. If I'm not doing a sale, I'm sending them four things. Because those four things they're entitled to receive. It's what we provide in our agreement with the VSOs. Thank you. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to put you all into break rooms. So in order to do that, I'm going to do this. And I'm not looking for more than three people in a room because you've got to get through all of this. So there's two to three. Let's see, there's 60 some odd of us in here. So that's 20. OK, so as we go through this, obviously, one person is going to present. The person they're presenting to is both going to be the client and the evaluator using uh, using what using the presentation rubric i guess now i should give you the presentation rubric uh link here it is it's in the chat everybody so uh somebody let's ask somebody austin maubridge you're gonna ask me a question but can you click on that link and confirm that you can access the presentation rubric yep one second let me click on this yep i can access it Excellent. I love it. That's awesome. Okay, here's what we will do. If you're at work or if you're traveling or something like that, totally understand because you can't present nor can you really evaluate. That's not going to be fair. But that's what we're doing right now. So if I put you into a room, just let somebody know that, hey, I can't do this. And then that person, if there's less than two of you in there, then I will move you into another room. Okay, because there's no way for me to know who's available to do what and all the rest of that. Okay, awesome. What's your question? Yeah, I was going to say, because you mentioned they were going to be in groups of three. So one person's presenting, one person's uh, being the client and doing the rubric. What's the third person doing? Just observing? Just observing. Okay. That's it. Just observing. And the reason I have the 
person role playing the client is I need to know what their experience was, <clears throat> right? That's why I don't need a third person watching. I need to know the experience of the person who acts as the client. Shaker, what can I do? Yeah, I don't see the presentation rubric link in chat. You do not? No. Okay, do you see it now? Uh, just a moment. Come on. I see a jot form. That is the presentation. Okay. Claim. Okay, all good. Sorry about that. Yeah. Thank no, you. then don't worry about it. everything I do is in job form this way. So you can uh, put it up into the cloud. Yeah, all can, good. Thank you. Down. All right. Has everybody finished filling out the DRB? Because I got to turn in the attendance. I want to make sure that everyone here is getting credit for being here. Please, let's take a look at that really quickly to make sure that everyone has actually filled it out. So uh, there are, again, 60 of us in here roughly right now. So if I go to the DRB, I look at submissions. I have, go ahead, Lena, what can I do for you? Okay, since there are three of us, uh, one is the client and the other one is the presenter, um, are we switching over um, or just one person is doing it and that's it? No, everybody has to actually present. Okay. Okay, so I don't care if an evaluator, if you're in a room of three and one person acts as a client for two of you, I don't care. But each one of you has to present. Okay. Almina, what can I do for you? So for the first hour of this class, me and a couple of others were in a meeting with our uplink. Can you possibly resend that? Can I possibly resend what? Attach the link for the attendance. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm more than happy. Can somebody put that up for me? I mean, I, I can do it. It takes a second. I got to go back to it. Who's your uh, your uplink? I love that. Who's your upline? Who's your hierarchy? We were talking to Shayla uh, Harris, Dushai Group. Uh, okay, gotcha. And, and what did she talk about? What was... Okay, thank you, Lemuel, for putting that up there in there. Um, it won't let you submit. Oh, Tony, that's not good. Let's see why. Uh, what was the what was what was she talking about presentation or she talked about calls? It was regarding calls and presentations this afternoon. Oh, okay. So basically, setting you up for what you're going to do after class. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Tony, yeah, it won't let you submit. So Tony, I'm going to add you to the list of people who attended. Right? We talked about that, so you're good. Do I have any other questions before you all get automatically assigned to rooms? Hey, by the way, take the time if you haven't chatted to that person in your room. I, just get to know them for a second. Take a moment. Like if I jumped in there with Austin, be like, hey, Austin, uh, I was really glad to meet you. I'm glad we have the opportunity to be in class together, man. Where are you at? What do you do? What do you like? You just, just get to know each other a little bit, okay? Ollie Sager, what can I do for you? I just wanted to make sure, so we're getting to the sponsorship program, and we're not going to actually fill out the life insurance sales plan, or are we, are we doing that part as well? I'm completely I'm confused about what you're asking me. So the end of A8 is just finishing up with the last will and testament and stuff, right? We're not doing the actual, um, the, the plan building with the allocation and all that. Or are we doing that as well? So where, what section does the plan building and allocation end? I'm looking for, I just, you know. Yeah, kind of just section A. We're just doing section A. So Ali, that is not in section A. All right, yep. cool, awesome. We're just verifying. <laughs> awesome, thank you. And, and oh, all good. And the homework is just Section A, right? Well, yes, the homework is all of Section A recorded with somebody. Okay. You can't do it by okay. yourself. You can't like talking to the camera as if I'm the client. You actually have to use somebody. Okay. Perfect. All right. I'm loving Let's it. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to put you all in the rooms and we will go there. If you have any questions, feel free to ask for help. The rooms are all open. Please join. is my favorite artist. All right, everybody, we are back. Hopefully, we've spent some time, and I understand if not everybody had an opportunity to do it, you're going to let, we're going to do this again on Monday, <coughs> I think either Monday or Tuesday, just let whoever you are with in that group, they had to get a chance to finish it on Friday. <coughs> Pardon me. And then you can go first, Okay. But this was a chance for us to practice. Hopefully, you're going to practice on your own. I encourage you and implore you to do it a few times uh, before you actually record your homework. 
because the biggest challenge that I see here is navigation, right? Like, how do I, what do I click on HP Pro? What do I say here? What do, <coughs> you know, what do, <coughs> gosh, what, what do I need to do in order to move the thing along in accordance with the script? All right, gosh, got this coughing fit back. All right, do I have any questions about the exercise that we just did together? Yes, Shaker, why am I not surprised, Shaker? How can I help you? So um, the accidental, the ad and certificate does not have any values because it, this is not a real car that we are responding to and, and that's fine. I just wanted to confirm that because all three of us had the same question. Yes, that is accurate. When you actually have an actual client uh, that has a return card, it will tell you the amount. In the meantime, just if you're going to use SGMAD, just say two thousand dollars. You'll be fine. Okay. Shaker, are you good? Yeah, yeah, all good. And and the the biggest challenge for us was the the navigating was okay, but it was really following the script with HP Pro. That mm -hmm. was the challenge. Yep. Well, that's why you need to practice, 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 because you're going to do it with a client. So yeah, you need to make sure you feel comfortable with everything, okay? Yeah, I mean, we can read the script fine, we can navigate fine, but doing them together. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of effort in order to get, and, and trust me, once you've done it a few times with actual clients, it, you won't, it won't look so daunting anymore. Once you get it down, it, the flow is fairly straightforward. What then becomes the issue is, can I build the plan, present the plan the right way? And can I get people to, uh, overcome whatever objections they may have. Brian Smith, what can I do for you? I just had a, a, a protocol question. When you're asking someone what, and they're a veteran, what what branch of service is it? Are you in or were you in? What is not offensive? Uh, well, I would just say, what was your branch of service? What was? Okay, so past yeah, tense is okay. Was, yeah, okay. past tense is fine because most of these people are no longer active duty. They're all veterans. Okay, great. What was your branch of service? If you ask me, hey, what branch were you in? What was your branch of service? Where did you serve? You know, were you uh, in the Air Force with your hands in your pockets, or were you a ground pounder, 11 Bravo with the Americans, or were you a jarhead with the Marines, or were you the fish with the Navy? I mean, it won't bother me, right? Don't defend I'm... my Air Force. My <laughs> hands were not in my pockets. They were fixing no. airplanes. Just so we're I perfect. turned wrenches. Just so we're perfectly clear. <laughs> Army people have a certain thought process about Army and uh, Air Force people. But anyway, it's all good. Anybody who served as a veteran, thumbs up, you know. Uh, Brian, does that answer your question? I'm going to say yes, it does. Yes, yes it okay, does. Perfect. I don't my hand, sorry. Gus, what can I do for you? Gus? Gus, we can't hear you. Okay, so are we allowed to say, like, ask them what's their favorite type of music and maybe play that in the background or something in a in a zoom meeting like are you talking about me no like in a zoom meeting just kind of like background noise <laughs> well you could sure it's up to you you're the one that's engaging with the client i don't necessarily think that that's helpful but you could. I mean, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. I'd rather focus on building rapport and then move right into it. That's just me. But I can understand why you'd want some uh, background sounds of some type. Talk to your upline and see what they have to say. Fair? Yeah. And also double leads. It seemed like the leads generated like off of the same names, different places. I'm not sure I know what you mean by that. Are you looking at your lead inbox and you're seeing the names in there twice? No, like, so when you ask like for veterans and friends and family, and then you ask them again for like veterans. Okay, yeah, so you're absolutely right. So keep in mind that we, we ask for the information about the <coughs> client, excuse me, and then the spouse, if there is one, then we have people to be notified, right? We have family, we have friends, and then we have veterans who would be notified to assist the family in the event there needs to be interaction with the VA. That's why we list the veterans there. And then when we talk about the three important facts, we list veterans then as well, because now we're asking them to think about the fact that, you know, only one in 200 veterans 
even know about this program. So if you as a veteran know of other veterans, not gonna help the family, I'm not gonna do anything else. Is there any else, anyone else who's a veteran that you wanna sponsor? So that's why it's a different section. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, did you have another question, Gus, or you good? Um, it seemed like that, maybe I didn't look thoroughly, but it looked like there was double leads, like say there was family members and then when you ask them for people to sponsor, it looks like that um it pulled from both those spots. Or am I wrong? Well, when you say pull, when you follow the script, you're gonna get names right in every every section. And when you're done, when you go into the uh, sponsorship tool, all those people would only be listed one time in the sponsorship tool. And then if you activate those or you add them and hit the floppy disk, all of those people will then be dropped into your lead inbox. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh -huh. Ashley Richards, what can I do for you? Sam, um, I was wondering, can you pull up presentations if we get knocked out of them? Like if it freezes or, you know, for whatever reason we have to close it or we get kicked out. Are you talking about if you're in your Zoom with a client and you get kicked out of your own Zoom? Uh, get kicked out of um, an HP Pro, your presentation. Like oh, okay. those. Yeah, so, yeah, it doesn't happen that often. There may be times because it's technology, right? And there's a bunch of agents that are using HP Pro all at the same time. It may happen to you. If you click on that uh, floppy disk to save each section, you can pull it back up and get back into it theoretically. Okay. But all right. That's it, good to know. You just got to, you got to give it a shot. That's why it's me. I'm going to get through HP Pro. I'm going to download the family information guide mm -hmm. and then all the other three documents. And I'm going to save that forever because I don't trust HP Pro. I think it may die. It could happen anytime. At least I've got the physical PDF files that if I need to, I can recreate all the information that I need. Okay. 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 Is there any um, place? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, is there any place that we should know to go to to like retrieve like prior presentation um, no right now you don't have the ability remember i showed you in hp pro that in the future you'll be able to pull up presentations to change their status but you don't have the ability to go into hp pro and pull up a previous presentation and look at the whole thing from scratch okay all right thank you yeah heather johnson what can i do for you Hey, Sam, uh, we just had a question about the um, presentation homework. Um, do you want me to wait to ask that question or is it okay? We're, there. We're at that point, other than okay. the fact that you need to make the check out to bring the Thunder Productions. Okay. The $5,000 for the course, but other than that, yeah, what? Uh, go ahead. What's your question? <laughs> um, well, we were wondering, do we need to like have someone get on a Zoom call with us and interact with us during the homework presentation? or just act like they're answering questions? Well, if you don't have somebody get on Zoom with you, then you're not actually doing a presentation, are you? No. no. So I didn't so know we, if like, are we pairing up with anybody in the class or are we just- You can pair up with whoever you want. Remember what I said is if it's me, as an example, let's say I don't have my pro version, so I know I can't go over 40 minutes. So that's going to frustrate me. I may take longer than 40. I'm going to check with somebody in the class. I'm going to say, hey, like somebody just did, Ali, right? Just share your number in your Zooms and maybe get with Ali and be like, hey, can we do it? Can you record for me? Or Brian Smith, you've got time. You know, do that type of thing. Or you can just do it with your upline or you can do it with a friend or family members. Up to you how you want to get it done. And everybody, don't, don't be alarmed by this homework assignment. It's really for me to set the baseline from the class and look at patterns to see what else I need to address as we move forward through next week. Yeah. That's what really all this is. It's for you to say to yourself, okay, I know where I'm at. I have a challenge uh, doing the sponsorship tool. I have a challenge bringing up the group letter. I don't know what the heck is going on there. I totally forgot to turn my camera off, right? These little things are going to be triggers for you so you get better and better at it. We do it now. So that by next Thursday, when you have to theoretically take your presentation rubric, okay, you'll feel much more confident doing it because you've been graded before, you've shown me uh, the video before, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get you ready for the fear spike you're going to have when you have to do it for your upline. Because there's nothing worse in the world <clears throat> than to go in front of your upline and they stop you. 
<laughs> right? You start your presentation, things good. Like, oh, okay, hold on. You're not ready. You don't want to feel that. You want to feel like, hey, I got this. I may not be perfect, but I'm good enough to pass. That's where I need you to be. Is that fair? That's great, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Did I, did someone have a question? Was that you, Charles? Did you throw your hand up and then throw it down? What's going on? I had a question, but I figured it out. But now I got a question again. All right, go <laughs> ahead. All right. So when I record at the bottom button, it says record, right? So mm -hmm. I record, I record it. And how do I send it after I record it? Well, when you press the record button, <laughs> depending upon what version of Zoom you have, you uh, can either record it locally to your hard drive, and then you just attach it to an email, send it to me, or you can record it in the cloud. If okay. it is too big or if it's in the cloud, what you do is when you send me the email, you give me the link so I can access the video. So if I'm on my computer and I have a Gmail address and I want to record it locally, I'm going to make sure I put it on my Google Drive, and then I would give Sam the Google Drive access and passcode. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay? You're but, the man. But just to be safe, sorry. The whole part of point A should not take 40 minutes. Well, you'd be surprised. How long did it take you right now to do it? It, it, it took me long. It took longer, but it's no, but no. So, I see where you're going. Okay, here's the deal. Everyone should be aware of this. It should take you no more than 30 minutes when you are completely efficient and you got this nailed, okay? Right. It should take you no longer than 30 minutes to get to the needs analysis screen. Got you. That's what you need to think. But one of the things I'll talk about when I when I see you guys on Monday, I'm not interested in efficiency right now. Because if you think about it, if I put that on you, you're going to feel stressed that you got to get it done at a certain time. I don't care about that right now. What I care about is, can you do the steps? <clears throat> can you navigate HP Pro? Can you put Zoom up? Can you turn your camera off? Can you read the script? That's all I care about. If that takes you an hour and a half, it takes you an hour and a half. Once you get better at doing this and do it a number of times, 30 minutes should be your goal to get to the uh, needs analysis screen. And the reason for that is if you think about it, you can only hold people's attention maybe hour, hour 15, think about it, right? So if it takes you that hour to get to the needs analysis screen, your clients are starting to check out when at the money time, when you're starting to show them things where you're making money, your whole point of doing it, you don't want them to check out. So if you can get there by 30 minutes, they're still with you long enough to get a second win to talk about the uh, the recommendations. Okay. I got you. All right, man. Lewis Pap, what can I do for you, sir? I have a sneaking suspicion this is redundant, um, but I'm going to ask anyway. To be clear, the the presentation is it starting at the phone call and then going to the presentation script. We're just starting at the presentation point. It is starting at the presentation point. The person is on Zoom. Okay. So, okay. So, all you, got it. yeah, all of you are doing your phone call stuff with your upline and all that. I don't need to look at that. What I, what I care about right now is, hey, your A1 opening. Hey, Lewis, what's going on? Glad you can join us today. At that point, all the way through section A. Okay. Roger that. All right, my friend. Edward Haynes, what can I do for you? So when we're doing the homework assignment on the important facts section, for example, when uh -huh. there's seven additional spots for VSOs, when we're yeah. doing the homework, do we need all seven of those spots filled out? Not on the veteran, not on the three important facts. Okay. But because you probably, I'll be honest, you probably won't get those veterans as very often. That's okay. what happens. So it's available to you, but I do care about filling out everything else. And I think somebody asked me, can I just repeat the information? I'm totally fine with that, but just do it in the role play. What, uh, the whole point of why I'm making you fill out every section is I need you to feel how long it takes when you're completely successful getting all the referrals. Okay. Okay. So when we have the fa four family members and the five emergency yeah. contacts, make sure we fill all of those out. All of those. I should not have any blanks in those areas. Got it. Thanks. Uh huh. Anna Davila, you had asked me to do the run through and I did do it. Did that meet what you were looking for? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. How can uh, I help you? Good. I got a question. When, uh, you, because you said you have Google Voice, correct? Yes. 
Okay, so I noticed in the Google Voice, there's different uh, types of, of uh, types of plans. Um, do we need the, the premier plan or, or uh, oh. the, the starter or the standard? Okay, so hold on. I, maybe I wasn't clear. When I do presentations and what the requirement is with us is you're using Zoom to do presentations. I used a Google Voice phone number I got for free because I have a Gmail account. Every Gmail account has a free uh, phone number that they'll give you. And that's the number when I first started out that I would use to call clients because I didn't want to use my own personal cell number. That's what I meant by Google Voice. Okay. How do you get, do you get it for free? Because I, I do have a Gmail account that I just created. For yeah, just go to googlevoice.com and or Google Voice or whatever it is and then log in with your new email address and they will assign a phone number to you and that that one is free of charge okay thank you yeah absolutely uh oh my gosh so many things going on uh talicia stone street almost as good a name as who where'd that guy go i lost him i don't think he's here but i liked his name too all right talicia what can i do for you Okay, I'm sharing my screen for one quick second because I want to, it's a specific question. Um, on this page, which is the last page of the family uh, info guide, it's not there right now because I didn't fill it out. Um, it had the policy number, the coverage amount, and this all highlighted in gray, like we should be filling it out. Mm -hmm. Where does that information come from? Well, if you sell them a freedom of choice certificate or, you know, a whole life policy, that's where they would put the information. So okay. what I say, if I'm going to even go down that path, I say, hey, this is where you're going to fill out your information if you're able to qualify for the VSO's programs. <clears throat> I just let them know that's where it would be done. Okay. So, and they don't know about that. We're just showing them this at this point. So that's something yeah. that you can go back and add. Okay, perfect. If yeah. you want. I personally wouldn't go back and add it. Because if I got them interested in buying, that's what I'm going to focus on more than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. that answers it. Thank you. All right. Do we have any other questions from this class? It is 20 minutes past the hour, 19 minutes. We have one more. Tony Sepchuk, of course. How can I help you? Okay. I just a question about um, someone being having a, a, a record with a felony. Um, are they uninsurable or does that depend on the circumstance? We're going to go through all that when we talk about the field underwriting as well as EAP next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Sounds like a deal. All right, everybody. I, as always, will stick around for any questions you may have. Let's see if this class can do this as we wrap up. I will see all of you not tomorrow, not Sunday, but Monday at 9 a.m. Keep in mind that you got the homework that's due to me by 12 o'clock Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Enjoy your weekend, and I will see you. Monday morning. Take care. Thank you, Sam. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.